All right, let's wrap up this week's lecture material and talking about graphs of polynomial functions. All right, so to get started, let's review uh, the end of the last lecture on uh, odd degree polynomials versus even degree polynomials when it comes to the range. All right, so keep in mind with odd degree polynomials that our domain and our range will be negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? Where we cross the x-axis, all right, so where our blue functions cross the x-axis, we can refer to these as zeros, solutions, and x-intercepts. I can use all those words interchangeably. All right, even degree polynomials have a restricted range. All right, if we have an even degree polynomial well, where both of the ends are pointing down, then that polynomial is going to attain some maximum value. So our range will be negative infinity to that maximum value, as we can see on the left. On the right, with both ends of the polynomial pointing up, we can see that that polynomial attains a minimum value. And so for this polynomial on the right, we see that the range is that minimum value to positive infinity. All right, let's talk a little bit about zeros and multiplicity. All right. If the zero has multiplicity one, the graph crosses the x-axis at this x-intercept. Okay, so what the heck do I mean by multiplicity? All right, so let me grab my, my pen here. Let's say I were to write my polynomial in factored form. Okay, and I'm going to write it as x minus two, times, that should be a parentheses, er, uh, x minus 1 squared, all right, and x minus 4 cubed. Okay, so if the 0 has multiplicity 1, the graph crosses the x-axis. Multiplicity 1 is the number um, or the power, I should say, on the factor. So x minus 2, uh, the, the vocab word for that is a factor, all right? If I plug in 2, I get 0, all right? So I'm going to come over here. So x minus 2, written that way, is a factor, okay? This is a factor. Two is the zero. Well, that should make common sense because if I plug in two, I get zero. Okay, so two is the zero, x minus two is the factor, and the power on those parentheses is one. All right, we don't see it because we never write one, but technically there's a one there. All right, that is the multiplicity. That one is the multiplicity, meaning does the factor repeat itself? And the answer is, well, no, because there's just one of them. There's only one of those factors, okay? So two is an example here of a zero where we are gonna cross the x-axis. And, and by, by, the, by the way, guys, I will be putting up uh, an example of this uh, on YouTube as well. All right, if the zero has even multiplicity, the graph touches the x-axis. Okay, and let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see how given even multiplicity, we just simply sit on the x-axis, or we can say touch the x-axis, how you want to say it, at that zero. So an example here would be this factor of x minus 1 squared. Okay, we have x minus 1 squared all right, two is even, okay, so the zero one, or the factor, x minus one, has even multiplicity. So at one on our x-axis, we're just gonna sit on it, or we're just gonna touch our x-axis. And then lastly, if the zero has odd multiplicity, the graph crosses the x-axis at this x-intercept and changes shape. All right, so what do I mean by that? It kind of looks like a, a sideways S almost. Note that it's different than the first one with multiplicity one. It's not a straight crossing, it's a curved crossing. 
all right? In other words, the concavity is changing, okay? Um, you may have learned at, of this point where we get this bend in the function as an inflection point or a point of diminishing returns. But anyway, going back to the example I wrote at the top, we have x minus 4 cubed. That means there's three x minus 4 factors. Okay, so we do cross the x-axis at 4, but because of the 3, or odd multiplicity, we're going to have this little curved shape or change in shape to it. All right, let's talk about in behavior. All right, this is oftentimes called the leading coefficient test. All right, and I know that that's, that is definitely going to pop up in the homework quite a bit, so leading coefficient test. All right, all you need to do to understand in behavior is look at your leading term. All right, leading term is the highest degree term that you have in your polynomial. All right, and so we're going to look at the leading coefficient, a, along with that, the exponent on that leading term. All right, so given the leading term ax to the n, if a is positive and n is even, both ends point up. All right, if the leading term a, if the leading coefficient is negative, but n is still even, then both ends point down. We know this with x to the squared. We know that 2x squared points up, it's a parabola, and negative 2x squared points down, that it's an upside down u. All right, so we're just expanding what we know to general polynomials. All right, it doesn't matter if it is let's say the national debt times x raised to 23 all right or, uh, let's say 22 the national debt is the leading coefficient and the leading term is x to the 22 i don't care what else is there all right all i care about is that the exponent is 22 that's even so I'm either both going up or both going down, and my leading term is the national debt, which jokingly we all know is quite negative. And so thus, given that, I don't care about anything else, I know that for my polynomial, both ends are pointing down. All right, let's talk about what happens when n is odd. All right, so if n is odd, that leading uh, degree is odd, and the leading coefficient, a, is positive, then it's the John Travolta. All right, so the right end points up, the left end points down. Our, basically, this is going to look like our x cubed, our standard x to the fifth, as we've already seen. All right, and so what happens is when we have an odd degree and that leading term becomes negative, then our points just, just flip. All right, so now our left end points up and our right end points down. All right, they, you can just see it switches from the positive. All right, so let's match each function with its graph. All right, so we have f of x equals negative x to the 6 minus x squared minus 3x minus 4. All right, what's the end behavior going to be? Because I'm giving you four choices with different end behavior. Well, you don't care. Let me grab my pen to be obnoxious here. You don't care about any of that. You care that this is even. So you know they're both going to go up or both going to go down. And this is negative, and so our answer is A. All right, because F is of even degree with a negative leading coefficient, its graph is A. All right, what about this one? All right, we have 3x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 4. Again, just to continue to beat it in your head by being obnoxious, we don't care about any of this. We care that this is odd and 3 is positive. And so this graph right here gives me the correct end behavior where the right is going up and the left is going down. All right, let's do another one. All right, negative x to the 7th plus x minus 4. All right, again. We don't care. This 7 is odd. This is negative. And so my correct answer is D, giving me in behavior where the left goes up and the right goes down. Again, terrible animation, Angie. 
All right, last one. I'm sure we can all logically deduce which answer it's going to be, but let's prove it to ourselves. All right, again, we don't care. Leading coefficient here is positive. 4 is even, and so positive and even both ends point up. Again, miraculous job here on the animation. All right, let's match each function with its graph. All right, so how the heck are we going to do this? Okay, so we are looking at the zeros, and we're going to look at the zeros with the multiplicity. All right, so this factor, x minus 3, with multiplicity 1 means I cross at 3. All right, so I'm going to cross the x-axis at 3. All right, this x plus 2 squared means I touch at negative 2. All right, it's opposite sign. So I touch at negative 2. Negative 2 would be the 0. All right, and then here, negative x plus 1, all right, 1, x is, 1 is going to be my intercept. And so I'm going to cross at 1. All right, so I'm looking for the graph where I cross at 1, I cross at 3, and I only sit on the axis at negative 2. All right, so here I sit on the axis at positive 2, so that doesn't work. Here I am sitting on the axis at negative 2, and I'm crossing at 1 and crossing at 3, so that's a possibility. Here I'm sitting on the axis at positive 2, eh, that doesn't work. And here I'm sitting on the axis at negative 2, that's correct. I cross at negative 1, and that doesn't work. And so my correct answer here is C. All right, and so we do know that F is of even degree, all right, with a leading coefficient, so both ends point down. Now let me actually talk a little bit about that. How the heck are you going to know that that's an even degree? Well, guys, all we have to do is add our exponents. All right, and I'm actually going to change my color here. All right, so we have a 2. All right, we have a 1. And here we have a 1. We add those numbers up. 1 plus 1 plus 2 gives me 4. So my highest degree will be 4. And I look at my x's. That's a positive. That's a positive. That's a negative. So negative times positive times positive gives me negative. That's how I know that they are both going down, even and a leading term that's negative. All right, and let's see here. Given the graph below, which is the correct polynomial in factored form? So now we're going to go backwards, okay? And so let's see, what do we have here? We have, we're sitting on the axis at negative 3. All right, so I know, X, oopsie. How, okay, scratch that out. And I'm just going to actually go back to red anyway. All right, so I know that I have an X plus 3, all right, remember it's opposite sign, and this is going to be even. That's a beautiful handwriting, huh? And I'm going to have x plus 1, and that's going to be even because I'm sitting on the axis at negative 1. I'm sitting on the axis at negative 3, and I'm crossing at 2. All right, so I'm crossing it too, and I do not change shape. It is a just a straight up cross. All right, and so I'm going to look over here and see if I can see anything that remotely resembles x plus 3 to an even power. All right, so right away I can rule this one out and I can rule this one out because I need x plus 3 and x plus 2 to even powers. And then lastly, I need an x minus 2. And we can see it here in D. It has x minus 2. All right.